the madman. And so around that place where Jesus. Uh, um, Please, if you have questions, just yes. The yes. Uh, All right, questions is increasing. Where the, uh, okay, where we have a lot of questions. After, yes. You know, after they left the body of that man. Yes. So this is just the uh, question. Okay. They received permission. The demons received permission from God. The, the demon received permission from Jesus, yes. From Jesus, yes. But they didn't receive permission from the pigs. They didn't receive permission from the pigs. Before they enter. Before they enter. Now, when it comes to the human. Yes. When I was saying that the demons received permission from, from, Jesus. from, from Jesus. Yes. Is, um, you know, it's just like, how do I put it now? When it comes to the human strategy, yes. those permission needs to be given by the human being. Mm-hmm. But these pigs now do not receive any permission. From the, yes. These, these, these demons did not receive. They to possess the pigs. Yes. So, but when it comes to the a human being, does an unclean spirit need to take permission from a human before possessing them? Yeah, let me let's answer that one first. Still keep standing. The answer is yes. Being a pig spiritually means that your life is opened. Your carelessness and your ignorance is the permission the devil needs. It's not like you. The devil say, "I want to possess you." Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> no. This thing is happening by posture. There's a posture you maintain in your spirit that your life becomes open to demons. Are you there? It's not verbal. Being a pig means you are careless with your life. You don't have a spiritual life, but you come to mingle with Christians. So you are like a pig in your spirit. Who is a pig now? A pig in this context is not an animal. A pig is therefore one whose life is opened to demonic infiltration. That's a pig. Are you there? So it's not about verbal something. You are playing, you are still doing something, doing that, and you are faking it. You are like a pig. And that thing you are doing is already the devil's permission to possess you. Are you with me? Yes, next question. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. Okay. Second question. You said the woman in the issue of blood. Yes. Uh, she did not follow the right process. Yes. In order to arrive at that miracle. That miracle, yes. Now, my question is this. That process, okay. is it a faith process or a religious process? Because according to... Now, that process that the woman with the issue of blood took, is it faith process or religious or process? Religious process. Okay. Because if we are saying that, uh, you know, we were just comparing it with people that do uh, that go through a, an obviously terrible and uh, uh, um, how do I put this word now? Fetish. Yes. Know, yes. In order to arrive at their miracle, yes. how do we compare that to? Is it that kind of means that the woman followed? Because this means was like a relig- it was a religious process. It was religious, and even this, the scripture was saying there that. What made that fear was in that of what has happened to her. It was not as though she felt as if she had done something wrong. So that process, is it a religious? How, how is it? How is it a wrong process? That's the process? Now look at this. What the woman did was actually wrong. Are you there? Because Jesus was representing the high priest, and an unclean thing should not touch the high priest. Because if you are unclean and you touch the high priest. Levites generally, if you touch them, you make them unclean. Are you there? The woman, what she did was wrong. But why did Jesus pardon her? Jesus looked at her motive. Her motive was not this Jesus, I want to bring him down. No. The motive was what God checked. This woman is doing it out of sincerity. She's desperate. She believed I can do it. Are you there? But she does not have the courage, the enough courage to talk to me. And she even knows I'm going to Jairus' house. It would be unfair for us to say, please, come to my house and come and lay hands on me. So I have to devise another means. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's it. But 
it can also be that our knowledge on that concept was not sufficient. She may feel, but it's just to touch the priest. Me, I'll touch the clothes. Are you there? Since I did not touch him, I did not touch his body. Eh, let me just touch his clothes. I don't think, I don't think the clothes, the root did not talk about clothes. But she did not know that Jesus has become one with everything that is on him. So though the process the woman followed was wrong, but God looked at her motive. And that motive justified her. Yes. Uh-huh. All right, thank you, sir. Mm. Um, I just want to also ask again. So, does it now mean that if we also pray that Jesus and want to touch you? Because now he's in the high priest. And um, according to the law, you can't touch the high priest. That's if you are unclean. If you are unclean. So, like me now, that I need, I'm a sick person, I need God's help. Yes, that's it. I'm okay. I that's just the posture of my life. Okay, so if I want to now relate with God and say, Lord, I want to touch you, I want your I want to touch you. you no, know, we made, we pray that prayer very well. Yes. So is it does it mean that I'm taking the wrong process? Being unclean in that sense, or being someone that needs help that is sick and wants to touch me. Does it mean that saying that now I'm following the wrong process? Now, the Bible says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. Meaning, blessed are those that are pure, for they shall touch God. Hmm? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are those that are pure, for they shall touch God. Because it's purity to purity. Nobody is unclean. But on the other way around, that time, Jesus had not died. So as long as the veil of the temple is still intact. Doctor, are you catching this? Thing? As long as the veil of the temple has not been torn, that law holds. But the moment Jesus died and the veil torn, those rules. That's why a sinner should come and take holy communion. Because that body of Christ will destroy the body of sin in the person. Don't say, if you are committing sin, don't come and take this thing. How do you want to deliver this, the man from the sin? The body of Christ will what? We de- will destroy the body of sin. Tell your neighbor, the body of Christ will destroy the body of sin. That's it. So when you say, okay, you are a sinner, don't take the Holy Come. Now what you are doing is, you are referring to before Jesus died. Now Jesus has died. The, the veil of the temple is torn. So, I, answer your question. Okay. I hope your question is finished. Now. Thank God. Finally, we are free. Yes? My question is based on the two aspects of this. I have like, when I get to the issue, because when the bed is too much, it means that the bed is too much. So you say, I think you should let them enter this way. Okay. So when they enter this way, why do they have to keep this way? Because they usually want to do this. So what's the key thing that says, you continue to ask their instructions? Okay, praise the Lord. No, she was saying that, she's saying that when the spirit entered into the swine, was the killing necessary? Why did they have to kill the swine? Because now at least they have a home. Praise the Lord. They have to kill the swine because they are destructive. The aim is to cause pain for the owner of the swine. And they succeeded. They succeeded. I hope the owner of the swine now will now get a juice and say, oh, we bless God for today. That's a sad day for the man. This man already thought that he's established. Can I tell you something? Do you know the owner of the swine was not even there? The Bible said, those that were leading this, they were his servants. It was just like Job that had a lot of animals and he had servants to man them. So this man... He's already established. He has a company. He doesn't need to come. He has MD there. And suddenly the company just... Only the workers escaped. Everything came down. That's what happened here. Are you there? They have to kill this one because they needed to cause the owner of that thing pain. And that's what demonic spirits do. 
And they know that there are still a lot of people who are living a careless life. So they, of course, they have people to possess. Are you getting what I'm saying? Can you, can, are you not thinking in this way? Your small body, how can your small body house thousands of spirits? Thousands of spirits means, oh God, we have been exposed to too many deep things here. Thousands of spirits means thousands of tendencies. So we are legion means, we are many means he has many tendencies that is ungodly. So he can be smoking, be doing all sorts of things at the same time. He's lying, he's everything that is bad. That means that man called legion has about 3,000 bad habits in him alone. Imagine how you live with that kind of person. That's why they have to give him the truth. Because nobody will complain. But as long as he stays in the city, no. Are you there? Yes. Yes? Huh? Every sinful act is sponsored by a spirit. So if I'm lying, there's a spirit of lying that can be cast out. That's it. Fornicator is, is working with the spirit of Wodon. Huh? As a Jezebelic kind of father. Yes? Yes, last question. Yes, when the woman touched the hem of Jesus' clothes, he felt, yes, there's something left him. Praise the Lord. That's teaching, that's a teaching to ministers. Hi there. And I'll be glad to answer your question because everybody here is a minister. Anytime you minister, um, something leaves you because you are giving out. So if you are always giving out and some, something is leaving you all the time, something is not entering, well, you will soon be dry. That's when, that's when you will know that this world is wicked. Those who you call daughters will leave you. And people that you call sons will leave you. Because they came for three months. What you are doing is, you know, the way Nigeria was colonized, everything has now become history. And now you have helped their hunger. To, you have helped them to desire meat. But you have retrogressed back to milk. They will leave you, sir. That's it. Are you there? So that's it. So as a minister, let's always what? Refill. Let's refill. It's very important. Now, please. Please keep standing. When I said let's always refer, I'm not saying that the Holy Ghost is now decreasing. No. Are you, are you there? What I mean by virtues, you know, leaving you is that one, is both physical and spiritual. When you minister, you get tired. Are you with me? Huh? You get tired. Naturally. You need to rest. Are you with me? That's part of it. Then two, is also that your spiritual content too. You have taught this thing. You need to know more. Are you there? You to subject yourself to the process and learn more. Keep refilling yourself spiritually. Are you there? Re- keep retreating so that you can keep refilling. Keep what? Retreating so that you can keep refilling. Yes. Two questions. Everybody is having a lot of questions. Yes? Praise the Lord. This is a very sensitive question. Why do Jesus, yes, why did he allow those demons to enter into what? Into what? Into those pigs. You see, there are, there are many things that can, be, that can be responsible for it. Are you with me? But the, the, the first thing is, they begged Jesus. They said, what? Don't torment us. Are you there? It therefore means that Jesus chose to what? Work with that agreement. Don't torment us. And Jesus did not say no. Are you there? So he had to work with the terms of agreement. But the agenda of Jesus is that this man no must be delivered what? Today. Are you there? That's why when you go for prayers, they used to say things like, and when others are praying, pray so that you will not carry whatever. Hmm? Similar to that thing that happened. So that's it. Uh, the story of Aaron. Okay. What 
They came to him. An idol for them, yes. Okay, now. The children of Israel came to Aaron, told him to make idols for them, and he made it for them. So that act, according to the question now, can it be called foolishness or what? Or wisdom. Praise the Lord. Now, the question is, did he join them to worship the idol? Huh? Did he join them? He did not join them. Are you there? He, what he did was he left them to the lust of their hearts. If you read the book of Romans, chapter 1, downwards, because they have re- decided not to retain God in their knowledge, so God gave them over to a reprobate mind. That's the same thing as these people have been asking for idols, so let them worship what they are asking for. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, any other question? Yes? We still have questions? Let's finish our question. Pastor, thank you. Yes. Is that you have the spirit of God or that of the devil? You can't really be empty. Yes. How many questions is this? Let's answer one after the other. Come again with the first one. Every, every, everyone that is not in Christ is a true in the hands of the devil. The devil can use them at will. So they are open to unclean spirits. Of course they have one. They have. Are you there? Because one thing is demons, you, they like to take advantage. Once they see something is open, they fill it up. So if God is not, if the Holy Spirit is not in you, then the spirit that is unholy is in you. That's just it. You can't be empty. Hi there. Yes, the next. Yes. Yes, you have to bring that person out of the canon. No, it, now, a, a, now, look at this. Somebody that is possessed is under a demonic canopy. You don't counsel a possessed person. You cast out the demon first. Then you now apply the tool of counseling. You see, there's no counselor that will be impactful in that ministry. Are you there? If he is not... If he doesn't have the tool of deliverance, there are some people once they enter into your office, hold their hands and say, "In the name of Jesus," and that will be. After that, thing is cast. You see, what advice will you give to a possessed man? They will take. They will just be nodding and flow with you. Yes. Okay. Ah. Well, okay. What's wrong? 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 Are you getting what I'm saying? So that's it. It's always good to what? Have I really answered your question? It's like I've moved away. Have I answered it? All right. Any other person? Okay, Pastor Dave. Just note your question. Yes, go ahead. Okay. I noted, yes. Yes. So what about Christians through the Holy Ghost praying in tongues and then starting to find certain um, features of the world that they put yes. out lines to them. And we said each of these spirits or each of these things are pioneered by spirits. So and it is not possible for the Holy Ghost to dwell in the person and then and the Holy Spirit to the person. So there is a kind of a Christian cannot be possessed. But if a Christian is uh, careless, a part of his or her life can be demonized. But it cannot be possessed because the Holy Ghost has possession of them. So the only thing the devil can do is to influence. A partial influence. A partial influence on the person. So he's speaking in tongues, but once you see his ladies like this, 
Are you there? So that's it. So that spirit, if the person is a Christian, that spirit is not possessing the person. It's just a partial influence on the person. A, a side of that person. Yes. That's why that one is more easy than possession. Possession is a serious case. You know why? The point where a spirit possesses you, it means they have signed the document of your life. And they have... <laughs> huh? You will sign though. Spirit of life, yes. I like it. <laughs> that's why the Bible says, that's why you hear something like lawful captive. There are captives that are lawful. That means they came into that bondage by law. They came legally. Are you with me? Take for instance, the one that went ahead to commit abortion now. By that sinful act, she enters into something legally. So a demon can hold her. Are you there? So the, you can't. The time is coming, we are going to do a teaching on deliverance. There are some cases you, you, you don't say, in the name of Jesus, come out. It won't come out. See, when you meet with lawful captives, it's not commanding. Mm-mm. The first thing is to make the stay of that spirit illegal. The moment the stay of that spirit becomes illegal, we can now command. Until it becomes illegal, you can't make any command. That's why, so some people you say, okay, now, this thing, did you tell your mother about this? No. Go and tell her. Tell her. I know she will not be happy, but tell her and just beg her. That action is a way of making the legality become what is illegal. And when that happens, the strong gold is broken. The evidence is destroyed. That is in the name of Jesus. Get out. It will work. So the first thing in deliverance is discern. The first thing in deliverance is what? To discern. Is this person a lawful captive? There are two types of captives. There's a lawful captive and there's the one that is unlawful. The person is not guilty and yet they made him captive. That one you can command. But a lawful captive, break the legality, then command. Yes? Then we said something about the Yes. And then we spoke about something like the sin. So you said, well, when you grieve the Holy Spirit, yes. the sin is taken away. When you? When you grieve the Holy Spirit, like the Holy Spirit, I can't actually remember that scripture. The Holy Spirit Okay, continue. So you say, you say when you give the Holy Spirit, when you give the Holy Spirit, that is sin. That the Holy Spirit is the sin. That so when you give the Holy Spirit, that the sin is that that's the identification of that. So that sin is taken away. Okay. So does that mean that because I think I was asking something one of these days and maybe yesterday and then you said the Holy Spirit cannot depart from a believer. That you can't. That the Holy Spirit will not depart from a believer. Okay, thank you. The Holy Spirit is God's seal. I there, but when you grieve the Spirit, when I say this seal leaves, what I'm saying is, you know, there's a way you can write something on a paper and it will fade off. Are you there? That seal, there's something written there. Touch not my anointed and do this one no harm. That writing is not there. So they can touch you. The seal is there, but the written, what is written on it is faded because you have grieved the Holy Spirit. You see, when you, when you receive the Holy Spirit now, the Spirit cannot leave you. It's there. Let me explain some things to you. It can't go. It's there. But the Spirit can be made to be impotent by your disobedience. Are you there? Are you with me? If God gives you a spiritual gift now, the spirit, God cannot take it back. He can't take it. But that gift may be dead in you. The more you disobey God, the more... Now look at this. This is my gift now. As long as I'm here, I'm making use of this gift. As I begin to disobey God, I start moving far away. Far away. Far away. Far away. Far away. Are you there? There's a distance I will maintain with that gift that I will not be able to use it again. Can my hand touch the phone? So I can no longer use this gift again. Does it mean I don't have it? But because I'm at a distance. So when you begin to come back to God, the distance starts reducing, starts reducing, then you can use again. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? So that gift, God did not take it. It is your disobedience that took you away from it. Anything the devil cannot take away from you, it will take you away from it. So it's not like when you now repent, God will now say, yeah, take the Holy Spirit. You will now say, okay, the grace that I <laughs> collected. When you sing, God will say, give me my Holy Spirit. I said, give me my <laughs> If you go to, do you know the sack bag that God will be carrying around? <laughs> I will live with right throughout the whole world. Oh, yeah, give me my nuts, give my. Hello, sir. Give me my Holy Spirit call. <laughs> <laughs> eh? It's without re- the gift of God is without repentance. Oh, yeah, give me my faith, give me my faith, give me my. Hello, sir. Ah. Say, blessed are my ears, for they hear the things of the Spirit. Yes, question. Okay. My question is from chapter 2, chapter 17. Okay. We're doing a, a part of this last teaching where we said something like Satan entered into the uh, agenda during that part of a small event process. Yes. So we now, re- we now refer to the case of Judas Iscariot that yes. Satan entered into him. So Satan entered into him, so yes. I found it in this passage where it says, Yes. Yes. So, my question is, these beings, they are celestial bodies. Like, yes. Okay, the first question is, what's the difference between fallen angels and demons? Okay. That's the first question. Fallen angels are. It's just like you have a friend, are you there? The devil is, was also an angel. It happens to be that when he fell, there were other smaller angels that fell with him because Lucifer was an archangel. So these other smaller angels that, fought, that fell with him, they were the ones that were referred to as what? As the fallen angels. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you with me? But demons is also, see, what we call demon is dimension. It's a dimension of the devil that is called demons. The same way God has dimension, the devil also has dimension. Anytime you see a, a, a demon, you have seen a dimension of the devil. Are you there? So when you say somebody is demonized, it means a dimension of the devil as as a hand has come into that person. So you see, that person will begin to act to carry out that part of the devil. It can be wickedness. It can be, are you with me? So, you know, we get to this celestial, now these are celestial bodies. Yes. So demons are celestial bodies. Yes. So they have a body on their own, or a celestial body. Yes. So, how can Satan that has a celestial body now enter into celestial body? Okay. So, celestial, terrestrial. Celestial means spiritual. Terrestrial means. Eh? Eh, eh. Celestial, heavenly, terrestrial, eh? so that we can come to it. Uh, amen. He, he is trying to, dis- he is trying to do something to us, but <laughs> it is where? It is where? <laughs> the Lord will judge every man according to his works. Amen. <laughs> It's good to also find time to check the dictionary. So, eh? You will be delivered in the day of trouble, such as today. <laughs> All right. The devil has celestial bodies. He has a celestial body. That's his spiritual body. But because he wants to do something in the terrestrial realm, he has to take a terrestrial body. Are you there? Where you have assignment, you must look like your assignment. So if I want to do anything among men, I need to take the form of a man. Otherwise, I will not be able to accomplish it. So that's why spirit will possess people to do something among people. Are you with me? But if spirit wants to change the realm into the spiritual realm, they don't need your body again. Are you there? When spirit looks at earth, everybody looks different. You look spiritual to them. 
when you look at them, they look spiritual to you. Because you are not in the same world. That's it. Yes. Can you see why the Bible says, Who is man that thou art what? Mindful. Even spirit looks at man. So, are you there? The same way we look at them and we marvel, they also marvel at us. Because we are not the same. Yes. Okay. Because that statement is made by God. Okay. Okay. What is man mm-hmm. that thou art mindful? Mm. Okay. Murasi. <laughs> okay. All right. Then I want to ask concerning God and that person. Yes. He said, um, um, you know, from evangelism. Okay. Because we thought us, he said that. Sister Best. Yes. Because he said that um, God has given us his name, so we should go. Yes, go. For evangelism. All right. So, because. The reason why I'm asking this question now is because there, there is difference in results as regards the individuals that evangelize. Yes. Obviously. Now, because when we go out to evangelize now, you know, you said someone that is possessed of demon, you cannot, as you said, a person with suicide is a cast yes. of demon. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, that's, you have to be physically cast in the level of time. Yes. Now, when we go out to evangelism, we want to save people that because the Bible says the God of this world has blinded has blinded their eyes. So yes, they are they are possessed. Yes. So there, there's a spirit that is already in them that that, we, that makes them not to accept this thing we have. Truth. Doing. Yes. And that's and so when we come out to bring the gospel, is it as though we are not contenting? Because some people now. As there is, there is a man of God that you know that listened to one time. He said it's not possible that I preach to you and you know receive Jesus. He said he said it's not it's not just possible. And we if we want to be frank with ourselves, <laughs> and that was he was so com- the man he was so me, sure. He said it's not possible he preached to you, you know I said Jesus. Mm-hmm. His mind has been <laughs> has been you know held by God. Okay, okay, so what I'm saying is some people go out, they minister and ministers are one. Another Christian goes out, he ministers and not, maybe nobody says give their life to Christ. What is the cause of that difference? And is there no, no, <laughs> is there This no question is coming from aggression. <laughs> Amen. The Lord will deliver us today. Yes. <laughs> what is the cause of that difference? And is there anything I need to do in order for my, because I, I understand. I understand. <laughs> Talking from experience now. <laughs> Is that God has given us so we should go. Mm-hmm. I understand your pain. So God has because it goes out every Saturday, so I understand. So is that God has given us something uh, so we should go. So if we are going now and the the we are not seeing, meanwhile some other people will go and there will be harvest happening. So is there anything I need to be doing to my life in order to make this thing go and grow in it? Go and go grow. Are you dead? Go. Yes, go. Yes. Grow and go and grow in it. You see, there's no time you go for evangelism that you don't grow. Because you learn something. So that thing you are doing is profitable to God. What is important is is God making profit from what I'm doing? If yes, that's okay. It's not about the numbers of people you that say, okay, I want to follow, receive Jesus. No. One, God wants you to grow in that thing. As you begin to do it, now you have more experience than the one that is not doing it. At a, it will get to a point, your result will start changing. Because by going, you grew in it. That's it. Then just like you said too, there is a word that people need. Are you there? If you don't have it, you cannot see the reward of that thing. So you need to keep grow, going by instruction, knowing that my going is obedience, and my obedience is pleasing God. That alone is a motivation. Before you now begin to see physical and tangible fruits. Are you with me? Yes. If a Christian 
Yes. Is it will the only go still recite the title? It's still there. It's still there now, but it cannot. Yes, now. <laughs> you know, these are the. He, he has taken the role of the Pharisees. <laughs> but I understand you, brother. He has continued in sin for 50 years. The Holy Spirit is still there. The only thing is, he's not active, he's dormant. You have moved so far away that you cannot, are you there? even when he talks, you can't get it again. Are you there? If he's not there, there's no possibility for you to come back to God again. That's what you are trying to say. Are you there? That means you're the, there's no, you can never come back to God. That's what it means. And that's why it's, it is possible for us to what? To come back. Are you there? When you sin, you are the one that's moving far away. When you start doing the right thing, you are what? Moving closer. Any other question? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Said, for it is impossible for those that have, those that have, I think have done something like that as man, last the workers retreat. Yes, workers retreat. Yes, I think Hebrews 6, okay. Hebrews 6. I've written it. For it is important for those who are once enlightened, having tasted of the heavenly gift. Mm-hmm. Do you know somebody who was talking about the brother where said there's one brother in our fellowship? I won't mention the person's name. The person said. I know a lot of you will have been talking about you like that. You are already making him. There's somebody at our fellowship. There's nothing you will call the Bible oh, that I will not know. Please, <laughs> <a> chance, <bro. laughs> chance, All right, continue. Okay. For it is important for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift yes. and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost yes. and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come. If they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, Seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So the place is saying that something like it is impossible for those that were once enlightened to walk in the Holy Ghost and then fall away. It's saying something like it is impossible to renew them again unto repentance. So you know what? Now this this is this is their rule. There is no human being that God cannot change. That's the that's the first foundation. You see, if you don't know right, if you don't learn rightly, your fruit will reduce. You'll be fruitful, but you'll be among those that is bearing 30 folds. Others are doing 100 folds. What are you doing with 30? 30 folds means in the multiple of 30, 60, 90. There's somebody doing his own in the multiple of 100, 200, 300. Are you there? Hello? Those people who have even fallen away. Okay, read that place again. I've answered this question in the retreat. Yes. Yes. If they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance. Seeing they crucify themselves the Son of God afresh. Yes. Yes. For the earth, which drinketh of the rain that cometh up upon it, and bringeth forth out meat for them. Now look at this. As long as they are far away, are you there? It is impossible. I I showed you an illustration the other time. The distance is so much, it is impossible. Are you there? But if they now, by grace, if they repent, are you there? Now why is it impossible? I think that's the question we need to ask ourselves. Are you there? Why is it impossible for them to what? To be restored. It is impossible for them. This impossibility now is not, is not an absolute statement. It's a momentary statement. At that point when they have not, you know, look at this. Why did they move? Why did they fall away in the first place? They fell away because they deliberately chose to look down on the sacrifices of Jesus. They have once said those things, they have once honored those things, they have once spoken about it, 
But due to what happened, they did deliberately decided to look down on it. And as long as they continue to look down on it, it becomes impossible. But the moment by grace they now look up to it, it becomes what? Possible. There's a side to it and there's another side to it. Now, look at the same Bible says that all sins shall be forgiven, but what blasphemy against the Holy Spirit will not have told you what that thing means. All sins, this is the fundamental, f- fundamental law. There's no sin that God cannot forgive. But why is it that blasphemy against the Holy Ghost will not be forgiven? When you blaspheme against the Holy Ghost, you are, what you are doing in that process is that you do not believe in what, in the works that the Holy Ghost has come to work. So if you don't believe in the one that can work out the forgiveness of your sins, the sins will remain. So that sin that remains will not be forgiven. It's not like God cannot forgive all sins. You need a house. Somebody is giving out house, houses to people and you look at them and say, you, you, never, you talk down the person, you remain a tenant. Until you acknowledge that, okay, you can help me, then you'll be helped. Are you there? That's it. Any other question? Okay, finally, we have been free from questions. Okay, there's a question there. May the Lord help us today. <laughs> it's a person. Yes. Oh, that's serious. <laughs> it's like this thing is spiritual. Praise the Lord. Now, our sister is saying that people are referring now to somebody that is dead. Either she'll be writing, they'll say, Oh, this I actually look like this person. Looks like bright, so meanwhile, the bright is dead. You are, look at how you are walking like bright. Are you there? You are laughing like bright and the likes. Hello, the, que- the question is this. What is the expression on their face when they say it? One, who is the bright to them? That's it. Your daughter must be somebody that you love. This bright is one of their loved ones. They can say it out of love. If I say you are doing this like bright, and that bright is a daughter that died some years ago, I mean, literally saying, you are like a daughter to me. That's what it is. It depends on the angle you are now saying this thing from. So if you see, can, can you see the angle from which the Lord is teaching us that? But the, the devil can say, they are making you look like a dead person. No, sir. Person saying you are like a daughter to me. That's what they are trying to communicate. So when you see it from that light, there's no need to fight and. Eh? Any question? Okay. <laughs> Lord, you you must help us today. Yes. <laughs> There are sins and there are... <laughs> and there are sins. <laughs> <laughs> and there are distractions that are coming. What a philosopher, yes? And there are distractions that are coming. To yes. But is it possible for a person to backslide your consciousness? <laughs> <laughs> is it possible to backslide and yet you don't know? Do you know what backsliding is? They are doing like this. They are sliding backwards. That's backsliding. Either. So can you be sliding backwards and yet not know? Hmm? The answer is no. Because if you are with God, there are things that you are committed to on a daily basis. Which even includes your thoughts. So the point of backsliding is when those things you are committed to are no longer your commitment. You have stopped them. Don't you know that you did not study the Bible yesterday? Are you not aware that you are, for the past two weeks now you have not prayed? You can't say, well, I don't really know. You know. When you are backsliding, you know. Because there are things that you have been committed to that you will leave in the process. You must leave something. Are you there? Repentance is leaving the world 
to cleave to God. Backsliding is eh, to. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Any other question? All right, the Lord has helped us. Can we say? <laughs> I would say, Lord, we thank you for this session. <laughs>